Toaster set was fantastic. I actually want to pitch a show where other people write pieces and he just reinterprets them. <laughs> <laughs> For an hour and a half. We'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> All right, I was going to write something new for the show, but then uh, my kid got sick and I didn't get to spend a lot of time with that. So this is something I wrote when I uh, first moved to California uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I was living in West Hollywood. That's got nothing to do with the story. It's just preamble. Uh, <laughs> and it's called uh, Out Came the Sun and Dried Up All the Rain. It's Paul laid out the way it was, sort of pointing off, kind of unnatural and on purpose. It seemed the animal was offering a clue in the case of its death. They looked in the direction it pointed, a row of houses, squared off like the pieces on a game board. They were their houses, no clues there. What do you think it means, said one of the younger kids. Don't mean shit, said Rut. <laughs> he had a long scar down the line of his jaw, or his daddy tried to teach him something real important, something neither of them could remember specifically, but something they figured wouldn't need a second lesson if it ever came up again. His eyes were the right kind of yellow for seeing through all the hocus pocus the younger kids liked to dream up. Just a dead dog is all. Glenn said to pissing on it his best attempt at a noble deed to chase off the younger boys with the sticks and the rocks and the pocket knives and the lighters and the firecrackers. Reckon we should bury it, he said, before someone gets up to something sick. No shovels, said Rut. Glenn nodded. Fuck it. The two split from the others, left them to whatever sick ideas they had in their minds. The wind was the right kind of cold for chasing away thoughts anyhow, bad or good, and as they walked into the gray morning, a murmuration of starlings exploded from some nearby bushes paint an unacknowledged masterpiece with the black of their shapes and the spaces between. Past the known houses and familiar streets, Glenn stuffed a cigarette out on the sole of his shoe. It's like they put it there, he said, his words connected to whatever mystery they drummed up while listening to the takeoffs and landings of jumbo jets on the far side of the rise. You know, to prove, like, shit, I don't know. Nah, said Rut. Nah, I know, it's like, yeah, said Glenn, yeah. There was a cave out there, just under the Big Dead Oak, more an antique root system eroded under by rain and an absence of underbrush than a cave, but it was a hole and the boys were keen to crawl into it. They laid there for a while that morning, 17 minutes maybe. It was a tight fit, the two of them, but there was something in the darkness and the closeness of it, something they couldn't explain. Rut whispered, Pop found some puppies once. Said the mom dog got run over on the head by his pickup. He was all, fuck I'm supposed to do with these. Dropped a box in front of the TV. They're mostly dead, I think. From the cold and all, but they were all together, all tight and cuddled, seemed nice. He said I could keep one, but they was all dead by morning, too small, I guess, just babies and all. From some place in the close darkness, Glenn said, never had a dog. They stole some jerky and soda from the Circle K for lunch, pissed on the cinder block wall out back, and went rummaging through the dumpster. Glenn found half a dead rat. Rut found a tangled up cassette tape of Escape by Journey, and they threw them both on the convenience store roof and laughed and laughed all the way to the park playground. <laughs> It was probably about two by then. School still hadn't let out, so there were the usual types, moms and their baby kids, some skateboard guys, and a homeless or two for good measure. The boys smoked the last of Glenn's cigarettes. Neither of them sure how to inhale, each doing his best to make a good show for the other. Rob pointed out one of the younger moms, leaning down to lift her toddler and pull the yellowed Polaroid from his jacket. <coughs> Featured a pale blob of blurry flesh surrounded by grainy darkness. Could have been just about anything, but they saw what they wanted. It's probably tits. And whatever it was got Glenn laughing so hard he accidentally inhaled, and his wheezing and coughing got Rudd to laughing too. And they were done with the park anyhow, and it was a long hike back to home. Nah, said Rudd, the two of them walking balance beam down the center of the street, arms outstretched like tightrope artists in the fading daylight. None of it means anything, that was Pop's point, you know? Yeah, said Glenn, I don't know though, seems like it should. There were some noises maybe, it all happened on top of itself, too many things too fast for Glenn to make any sense of. There was a warm on his face, Rut's blood landing on his cheeks and eyelids. There was a flash of the car glancing his leg as it swerved through his friend, the kind of brightness you see with your bones before your eyes can take it in. There was the sharp of the asphalt along his ear and his side and his arm. There was even Rut's hand, inches from Glenn's face, sort of pointing off in the direction of their houses. Kind of on purpose, suggesting a clue in the case of his death where there were no clues to be had. There was all of that, but nothing with enough of anything in it to string any of it together, not in any meaningful way. Before long, it was night, with morning soon to follow. Thanks.